Hi, Math 300 students. Welcome to Chapter 3. Chapter 3 is all about symbolic logic. And the reason why I included this subject is because of a conversation I was having with several members of the Communication Studies Department. They relayed to me that many of their students are taking Math 300. And because it's a topics course, I asked them what topic would be good for, um, for us to cover. And they, they definitely said the statistics and probability that we've been over, but they were very much in agreement that we should teach symbolic logic and because of the thought patterns that it that it creates. So this section 3.1 is going to give us a lot of the definitions that we need as we move forward in the chapter. And so it introduces the whole study of symbolic logic. And what's interesting about symbolic logic is that it uses letters to represent statements so that we take them out of um, a form where we kind of put in our own biases and things and just apply Okay, in these compound types of statements, as somebody says this, what are they really saying? Or is what they're saying true? Is what they're saying false? And so we can use symbolic logic to determine the truth of the statement that's being given or the falsity of the statement, especially when it has multiple parts. And so I've used a word already that is um, needing to be defined. And these definitions that I have typed out here are ones found in the book. So a statement is a declarative sentence that is either true or false, but not both simultaneously. A statement's not a question or things like that. A statement is a declarative sentence. And so an example, it would be looking at something like this. Um, the color red is a primary color. That is a statement. It's a statement because either red is a primary color or it is not a primary color, right? We would have to go look if we're unfamiliar with um, what pr the primary colors are. But the color red is a primary color. If it's, if it's listed as a primary color, it's true. If it's not, then it's false. And, and it, statements are fine if they're false. That doesn't make a statement. We want to be evaluating statements and to determine whether they're true or false, especially when they're combined with other things. So what hurts us is something like this. Um, red is a great color. Now, this is what they mean by the statement, or a declarative sentence that is both true and false simultaneously. Red is a great color is a matter of opinion. So the reason why this is not going to be a statement. So let me come in here and in blue, just right for the first one. The first one is a statement, but the second one is not a statement. And the reason it's not a statement is because it's an opinion. It is a matter of somebody's opinion whether red's a great color. Some would say, yeah, that's true. Others would say, no, that's false. And so we can't have that. It's got to be something that's very, very specific. Um, it could also be, uh, wonder if this is a statement, something like, it rained today. Well, is that a, is that a declarative sentence that is either true or false? And the answer is yes. If it actually rained today like it did, today is Monday, March 28, 2022, it rained today. So that would be a true statement today. Um, it did not rain two days ago. And so it would have been a false statement on that day. And so a statement is very simple. You know, it's something that we can judge as being true or false. You probably have some homework questions that says, is this a statement or not? And you'll be able to determine. One other thing to highlight though, and I'll highlight it in red, is something like this. Um, do you like math? A question is not a statement. Right, it's not a declarative sentence. So I think it went without saying, but I'm pretty positive they'll have some examples that have questions in them. And so any question is not a statement. Okay, perfect. So why are we doing all of this? 
why we're doing this is sometimes we take statements and we make them very convoluted by putting in ands and ors and ifs and buts and ifs and thens. And it gets really, really hard to decide, okay, what's what's true in all this? If this is true and that's false, what does it put together mean? And so let's take a look. In order to, to evaluate these things, these things that I'm referring to that uses the ifs and thens, the ands and ors, these are what we call compound statements. So a compound statement is combined is formed by combining two or more statements. The statement comprising a compound statement are called component statements. So each compound statement is made up of two component statements. So it could be something like this. The sky is blue and it rained today. Okay. This, and I'm just gonna make stuff up here. We're not gonna evaluate them yet. We're just getting an understanding. The sky is blue is one statement. It rained today is another statement. Each one of those can be evaluated as to whether they're true or false. And so um, the reason why it's a compound statement is because I have two statements joined by what they call a connective. So in this case, and is the connective. And an and statement, really both things need to be true in order for the statement to be true. But that's what's going to be gotten in the next section. Uh, it can be an or statement. It could be something like... Um, the student um, came to class or the student talked with the teacher. Again, these are just coming from my mind. They don't have to be, um, they don't have to be anything special. Right? There's two phrases in here, came to class, or two statements, shouldn't say phrases, they are statements. The student talked with the teacher. This or right here is a connective. And so these ands and ors and ifs and thens and nots are what we call connective types of statements. And they have their own symbols. So, so that I can stay close to this, and I know you have the ability to back up the video if you needed to see this, these examples again. Um, I will need to show you the symbols that are being used. So there is a, they go over three in the 3.1 section, and, or, and not. The symbol for and is um, an upward facing arrowhead. I don't know what to call it. It's like the letter A without the thing, line going through the middle. Or is the exact reverse where it's pointing down and not is this kind of wavy line. We are going to be replacing things with symbols. So um, as we change out statements, each statement will receive a symbol. Usually th they're given letters from our alphabet, but P and Q are used a lot. T and W are used a lot. But they, they use all of these letters, typically towards the end of the alphabet, to represent statements. So for example, I had the sky is blue and it rained today as one of my examples. So if we let the sky is blue be P and it rained today be Q, so I'll put this as P, I'll put this as Q, then symbolically we have P and Q. And so we're going to trade out words for symbols like this. And keep in mind, we're going to build up to big, big compound statements. But what we're trying to drive at is this is the symbology that we're going to be using. And we'll practice with it in 3.1. Okay, the last couple things that we need to talk about, and then we'll go look at some examples that are in the homework. Um, this this idea of called a quantifier. So a quantifier gives things um, an amount. And so there's words that we use that kind of quantify things like all, each, every, none. And if it's 
if it's those types of words, they call them universal quantifiers. And some, some words and phrases such as some, there exists, and at least one are existential because they don't include everyone. And there's other language that we could use. So for example, I can make a statement like this. All students uh, will pass the class. Now that's going to be able to be determined as true or false. So it definitely is a statement, but probably not until after the semester, right? And we'll look to see if all students pass the class. Well, this all right here is what makes it a, a quantifier, right? This all is a quantifier it, because it gives an amount. And because it involves everybody, this is a universal quantifier. So if we said something like no students will pass the class, well, that's also having a universal qualifier of no. No students passing the class means that nobody's going to pass the class, right? And so that's why they'll throw no in there as one of the ones or none, none of the students will pass the class, no student will pass the class, are all universal quantifiers. What they mean by existential is when they say some students will pass the class. Or most students will pass the class. That will definitely be the case. These are what they call this most and some because they don't involve everybody. They call them this existential quantifier. Okay. So again, that's typed up here, existential quantifiers. As we go through and um, you'll see those happening. So I just want to give you an idea of that. And again, we'll go look at the homework in just a minute. So again, I know you can back up the video. So I'm going to erase this because there's another statement up here that we need to look at. It's kind of connected to the one above. I can't separate it. So we'll come here. This is really important. We'll also be asked to find the negation of a statement. The negation is the complete opposite of the current statement. Or current statement. Yeah. And we must be careful when a statement includes a quantifier. So they may say something like this. P is equal to um, it rained today. And I'm just trying to be careful not to use examples that are already in the book. If they wanted the negation of P, first of all, it looks like this symbolically, this little not symbol. So this is not P. Not P would be the complete opposite of it rained today. So the negation of the statement has this symbology. That little wavy line P is equal to, well, what's the opposite of it rain today? It did not rain today. Okay. Now, what if P is all students will pass the class? What I'm trying to stress with that last sentence above, we must be careful when a statement includes a quantifier in finding its negation. This does involve a quantifier of all. We need to be careful. The most common mistake for the opposite of P is for somebody to write, none of the students pass. And that's not true. So this would, if, if it were being graded, right? Let me just be, it would be marked wrong. That is not true. So let's talk about why that's not true. Come in here with an eraser and get rid of that and get back my pen in the right color. Think about what it means for not all students to pass the class. It doesn't mean that everybody has to fail. If at least one person doesn't pass, then not all students have passed the class. So the opposite of all students passing the class is at least one student fails. 
That's all that it takes. We don't need everybody not to pass the class, but at least one student, and let me keep the same language, at least one student does not pass. That's all it will take in order for that statement to be wrong. So the negation of a statement is the complete opposite of the statement, not just a partial opposite. So it's got to be okay for this not to happen, what needs to happen? So that's why we're going to be really careful when we run across those and choosing the right negation. So negation means taking the opposite. Let's just go into the homework and see. So I'm going to try to switch over to the homework. And sorry, I knew I was gone for a little bit. So here we are in the homework. This is your 3.1 homework. And it says, fill in the blank to complete the sentence. The statements x is less than 8 and x is greater than or equal to 8 are, and let's see what our options are. Are they quantifiers of each other, negations of each other, connectives of each other, or components? You know, you might already know the answer, but I'm going to go look at some of these. Components are um, the parts of the statement, uh, or the two parts of a compound statement, right, or the, the parts of it. So the statements... I'm sorry, the components would be x is less than 8 and x is greater than or equal to 8. So they're not components. They're not connectives. They're the opposite of one another. They're negations of one another. If you're not less than 8, then you're greater than or equal to 8. And so we'll come down here. And because there's such limited options, it's a final check. And we say, hey, that works out great. The statement, some batters strike out, contains an... And is it a universal negating con conjunctive or existential quantifier? Well, it's going to be the existential quantifier because some does not include everybody. So remember with quantifiers, there's universal quantifiers and there's existential quantifiers. Universal ones would be using the word all or none or every. Existential means some many, most, but not everybody. So this is an existential quantifier. And so you'll do these vocabulary, basically, types of questions. Decide whether the following statement is, I'm sorry, the following is a statement or not a statement. Madison, New Hampshire is an enjoyable city. Now, is that absolutely true from everybody's perspective? And the answer is no. That's just an opinion. So this, it can't be a statement. So this statement is not, so it's either B or C. The sentence is not a statement because it is either true or false. No, that's a statement is either true or false. Not a statement is a, an opinion. And so we would choose not a statement, right? And so you'll have, you'll be evaluating these things. Decide whether the following is a statement or not a statement. Five plus six equals 11. And 7 plus 6 does not equal 7. Decide whether the following is a statement or not a statement. What do you think? Right? Is it a statement or not a statement? They don't have to be true, but 5 plus 6 definitely does equal 11. And six plus se 7 plus 6 definitely doesn't equal 7. But even if they were false, it would be okay. They seem to be a statement. They're either true or false. So I would mark statement. Now, it's a compound statement but they're not giving me that option. And so, again, you're just evaluating whether something's a statement or not, deciding whether something's a statement or not. The bowl is smooth or my backpack is empty. If both of those can be either true or false, then it is um, a statement. Oh, this one, is this a compound statement or not a compound? This is a compound statement because of the word or. Right? And so you're just going to breeze through, I think, this first homework, right? whether things are compound or not. Again, their whole motivation is trying to get you to look at something and be able to determine um, from a linguistics point, from the language that they're using, what's right and wrong. Write a negation for the following statement. His mother's unlucky number is the number 41. His mother's unlucky number is the number 41. So what would be the negation? His mother's unlucky number is not the number 41. That's what we're looking for. Not his mother's unlucky number might be, 
No one's unlucky number. No, someone's unlucky number. No, he's got to always be about his mother. His mother's unlucky number is the number 25. His mother's unlucky number is not the number 41. So if this is false, then it's not going to be 41. And so it's the last one. We wouldn't know if it's 25 or not. And then if we come back up here, his mother's unlucky number might be the number 41. No, it's, it would be the opposite. So we would choose something like F. This one probably gives us multiple checks because there's a lot of big answer places. And so you're gonna just practice writing the negation again. Um, and then they want us making sure that we start to use the symbols. I drive an old Ford Mustang, translate the symbolic compound statement, not P into words. So if we want not, I drive an old Ford Mustang, then I drive an old Cadillac, maybe, but I could drive a Toyota Prius and be able to not drive a Ford Mustang. I drive a new Ford Mustang. Well, if you're not driving an old Ford Mustang, that doesn't mean, again, that you drive a new Ford Mustang. I do not drive an old Ford Mustang. That's the only one that makes sense. The opposite of I drive an old Ford Mustang is not you drive something specific, but you just don't drive an old Ford Mustang. And so it would be that option. And then this is a really good one. Right? So write the symbolic statement. So P is I eat bananas. Q is this is an octopus. So we want not P, that symbol, and Q. So first of all, do you remember what that symbol is? Is that symbol an and or an or? And so we could go back. Again, you can take notes, but we come back here. Oh, that's the and symbol. So I'm looking for an answer that has an and. The not is only happening on the P. It does not go to the Q. So it, this is not P and Q. So it is, I do not eat bananas. So it's either A or B or D. And, so now it's either A or B, Q. This is an octopus. So I'm looking for, I do not eat bananas and this is an octopus, that's B, right? And I choose my B and I check my answer. And so you're just practicing with the symbols here. Um, and they always want to make sure. So now they're testing our ability to understand qualifiers. So refer to the groups A, B, C identified here. All circles are filled in with black. So they want you to find the one where all circles are filled in with black. Well, that seems to be option C. So you would choose that one and test it out. What about this one? All circles are not filled in with black. Okay, let me go back to the last one. All circles are filled with black. We think it's C. Now look at our options are C, A, B, or some combination of two. But I think only C has them all filled in with black. And they're going to say, hey, yeah, good job. Now take a look at this one. All circles are not filled in with black. Well, A has all circles not filled in with black. B has all circles filled in with black. And C has every single circle not black. So is it C where all circles, every single one are not filled in with black? I bet you it's just C. Let's just check. C only. So A has a circle not filled in with black. Um, but I think it might just be that guy right there. Yeah. And so they're just making us think about some of this. Explain the difference between the following statements. Some boys did not pass the exam. All boys did not pass the exam. And so you're going to say whether there's a difference or not. And again, just an evaluation. Which of the following statements is true? For all real numbers, x less than 0, x squared is also less than 0. Well, that's not true. x squared is always positive. For some real numbers, x, x squared is less than 0. Nope, x is always positive. For all real numbers x, x cubed is greater than 0. That's not true because if x is negative, x cubed will be negative. For some real numbers x, x is not less than 0. That's true. You can definitely choose an x not less than 0. And so that's the way your homework's going to be, right? That was the last question. So there's nothing big or grandiose here. It's just an, an experiment with the, the language. And I would pick similar problems for the exam. So give it a shot. See what happens. Um, but hopefully this is...